before but it won't prosper When the darkness falls it won't prevail Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph My God will never fail Oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you There's power in the mighty name of Jesus Every war he wages he will win I'm not backing down from any giant Cause I know how this story ends Yes I know how this story ends the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good You turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs
are my morning song Though darkness fills the night It cannot hide the light Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy Underneath my feet You are my sword and shield Though trouble lingers still Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me I know who stands behind The God of angel armies He's always by my side The one who reigns forever He is a friend of mine The God of angel armies He's always by my side My strength is in your name For you alone can save You will deliver me Yours is the victory Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me I know who stands behind The God of angel armies He's always by my side
Lord, you died for me forever. My praise will go to Thee, O oh God. Thank you for choosing me to be your child and bear your name. O oh Jesus, I will never cease to sing. On a solid rock, made a firm place to stand. Lord, we'll always will trust in Your loving hand. Oh God, thank You for loving me. When on the cross You made history, Lord, You died for me forever. My praise.
Good morning once again mga kababayan, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Welcome back to Barkadahan kay Cristo Global Online Worship. Thank you so much. And this is our first service and I'm so glad and excited to bring you nothing but a life-changing message that will come only from the very Word of God. And for those who join us for the first time, we welcome you po to Barkadahan kay Cristo Global Singapore. Thank you, thank you so much for dropping by. And I hope and I pray that this will not be uh, the last, but uh, this is just the beginning of our Good Fellowship Online. And for those who are um, watching right now, thank you so much for joining us in this online worship. We are so glad that uh, we can have fellowship online thank you so much and uh, we hope and pray that every Sunday we will see each other here at the uh, FB account of Barkadahan Kai Christus Singapore thank you so much and we also have our YouTube premiere and uh, you can also watch in our YouTube uh, channel BKK uh, Connect and also in our uh, BKK webpage as well we have premiere right now that is um, going on and I hope and I pray that you can just share this online worship to your friends, family and uh, to your relatives. Thank you so much for doing so. But before anything else, I would like to encourage everybody to become a kingdom investor. Now on your screen, we have the DBS current account of Barkadan Kay Cristo, which is 1069024242-2. Once again, 1069024242-2. This is the DBS current account of Barkadahan Kay Cristo. And once again, I would like to announce that our webpage and our website still under repair and we cannot use it. I will announce once the repair has been completed. Thank you so much for doing so. And uh, before anything else, I would like to kick this off with a prayer. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your very presence in the midst, Lord God, of this online worship. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing us in one accord, in one mind, in one spirit, dear God. Thank you, dear Lord, that as we listen to your words, we will not only be encouraged, but we will be changed by you, dear Lord. Lord, we also thank you for all those generous giver, kind giver, that you are using, dear God, for this ministry. Thank you for their lives and sharing, Lord, gather portion, Lord, to make this ministry, dear God, reach more souls for the glory of God around the globe. Thank you, dear God, and I hope and I pray, dear Lord, that uh, they will receive their portion as well. They will be blessed, dear God, press down, shaken together, running over. Thank you, Lord, that their storm, their, their Lord, will be full of your blessings in the name of Jesus. May it be, Lord God, financially, physically, and spiritually, dear Lord. Thank you, dear God, and I pray that not only, Lord God, the giver will be blessed, but also, Lord God, their family members as well in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just cast our cares before you, and thank you, Lord God, for bringing us once again in this online worship, dear Lord. Thank you for everything that you had done and going to do, dear God, in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. That was wonderful. And I'm so excited to bring you another great message coming from the very Word of God. And uh, today's topic, shine in the dark. Yes, shine in the dark. And this is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 to 16 new living translation and if you have that with you let us all read God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all sorts of evil things against you because you are my followers be happy about it be very glad for a great reward awaits you in heaven and remember the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. You are the salt of the earth. 
But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all, for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Don't misunderstand what, why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth until heaven and earth disappear. Not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be called great in kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Thank you so much for reading the very word of the Lord that is plain and simple. And we heard about this kind of topic many times. So we just make it simple. And to remind ourselves that we need to shine in the dark, especially in these last days. Especially in these troubled times that we are in. People around us need us. People who are desperate need us. And uh, as the children of the Lord, we should be doing our part. We should be light of the world. We should be light of the dark places. We should be light of the dark life of people. And we will study about that. And uh, let's just move on to the introduction that last Sunday we discussed when I think about the rain. I love this topic as well. And lesson from the rain, we have the cycle of the rain, um, the benefits from the rain, and the item to Lord of the Word, and uh, His perfection of His Word, His purpose of His Word, the power of His Word, pleasure from His Word, and prospering of His Word. That is the very powerful of God, and if we keep it inside our heart, and uh, we can see the outcome of it. There are a lot of outcomes from keeping and living uh, from the very word of the Lord. Amen. And uh, today we will look at the moral deterioration that you observe in our country, other countries, and the world. This is very rampant. God has placed his people around the world to be salt and light. We can and we do make a difference. This world is not our home, but while we are here, we will let Jesus shine his light through us. And that is really expected by the Lord to each and every believer that we should shine our light and we should demonstrate the saltiness of, of being a believer. The making flavor to the lives of many who are desperately needs the truth and to be enlightened by the truth. Amen. So number one, corrupt world. Corrupt world has their love for darkness. And uh, John 3.19, what does it say? Jesus said, that uh, the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved darkness more than the light, for their action were evil. Amen. And this is very evident. Jesus is really open. Jesus is really truthful of saying that more people love darkness rather than light. More people are enjoy, enjoying bad things than good things. More people are indulging themselves in, in a kind of unrighteous life. 
And we are here, we receive Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior, not only for ourselves to be saved, but also to share the salvation to others. And that is the expectation of the Lord from every one of us. There is no exception there. There is no exception there. There, is, um, there are people who love darkness because they don't understand. So they need understanding and how they can gain that. Of course, from the sharing of the very Word of God, from sharing our testimony. Give them enlightenment of the things that they don't know, so that they may come to the light. Amen? And Jesus is very specific that more people are doing or loving the darkness than the light. So we need to, once we know all this, we should mobilize ourselves. We should, we should do our part. We should share the good news to the people. Amen. We will start in our family. We will start in our relatives. And then we go out in the community in sharing the good news to them. Amen. We are witnessing in the darkness invading the world like watching on an eclipse darkness increases as the moon passes between the sun and the earth the forces of evil are blocking out the light and the evident is what is going on around us there are chaos there are wars hallelujah there are protests right there are killings, there are fightings, and even inside the family, there are misunderstanding. There are a lot of darkness going on, and if you are not concerned about this, you're missing something from that salvation that you receive from the Lord. And this is a mandate. This is not just merely words. This is a command from God that we should share the good news to others before something bad will happen before the judgment time will come amen they need us spiritual darkness is growing in the world in the church the church today accept and approves of things that are contrary to the truth of god's word we we can we can notice that there are a lot of movements right now that you can do whatever you want to do uh, you, you can even not recognize Christ as the Son of God, but they call themselves Christians. Can you imagine that? Hallelujah. Words like a double meaning, like the, you are okay whenever you're not okay. If you are not okay spiritually, you are not okay. You will never be okay. Hallelujah. You will be okay if you come to the presence of our God. There are many uh, double meaning words coming from the church itself. Sugar-coated kind of preaching. They don't even preach sin and they don't even preach hell. Hallelujah. They just preach good things or good for the hearing of their audience. You see, darkness is not only in the community, but even in the church. So you must be aware. And if you are aware, make use of that salvation. Make use of that righteousness that given by the Lord and Savior and Jesus Christ in you to share that good news to others as well. If you speak against darkness, you are attacked and a curse of being mean-spirited. Have you experienced that? I experienced that when I was in USA. I, I, I shared that one, one believer, yeah, stay away from me. When I, shared, when I shared the truth and good news, hallelujah, you will be different from the others if you are vocal enough to share the good news. Amen. And you will experience that. People will tell you that you are narrow-minded, you are unloving, you are a bigot. <laughs> As a society, we have become accustomed to the darkness. They, these are the things that they are used, used to live. And if you share something righteous to them, you are, you are out of place. 
you are different <laughs> you, you you are unloving you are uh, you you are very narrow-minded kind of person they will tell you all things like this but they must hear the words i don't care if you hate me for sharing the good news to you i don't mind hallelujah um telling me of of nasty things i don't mind as long as i can share the word of god to you that all that matters amen hallelujah we need to we need to mobilize ourselves as a child of god you are not part of the darkness and jesus said in john 8 12 i am the light of the world if you follow me you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life there is no compromise if you are with god you there's no compromise and and i really praise god for, for um, my uh, cycling body no i i can tell you my cycling body when we are going to pass um, the road here in Singapore that we are not familiar with he stick to the fact that he said all the expressway um, is um, all the bikers in expressway are prohibited so we cannot pass the expressway so I told him thank you for standing up with the truth thank you for being brave enough to really uh, tell that to everybody and uh, finally Paul will come to um, understand that that highway is not an expressway so we managed to pass uh, th that way so I praise God we need this kind of people who can stand up with the truth and tell others hey what we are doing is not right we should think it twice before we do it we need this kind of people hallelujah there are a lot of believers who are compromiser compromiser even though they knew for the fact that that is unlawful and righteous they still kind of doing it amen and it's wrong if you see me doing such unrighteous kind of act tell me I am open to rebuke hallelujah I need that because not all things I can see in a bright side hallelujah tell me and I will accept that by by all means hallelujah and thank you for doing so John 12 46 and it says I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in darkness we have Jesus in us and this is expected by the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that all of us his children will shine their lights will not heed their light or cover it with basket no this is expected for all of us to shine in this world amen hallelujah we need to shine people needs us hallelujah they need to hear the very word of god they need to hear the gospel they need to hear the truth amen there's no compromise especially in these last days amen if you are really a child of God stand in the truth stand in righteousness prove that you are really a child of God amen hallelujah John 15 19 the world would love you as one of its own if you belong to it but you are no longer part of the world i choose you to come out of the world so it hates you and sometimes you will experience this you are different from the others hallelujah but my experience many times in my life whenever i uh, go to a party of course um, some of the boys will offer me liquor to drink but uh, i can refuse to i told them that i'm not drinking liquor anymore and they will say just touch it they will provoke you <laughs> of doing things uh, hallelujah that uh, they can make fun of 
So I told them even to touch the liquor. It's not my business anymore. So I'm sorry. But because of that, they will love you more. Hallelujah. In my experience, they don't hate me. They like me of doing so. And they will tell me, you really a, a great believer. Hallelujah. You, you, it means that you passed their test. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you may come a point in, in such situation that you will be challenged by friends. Amen. But you have to stand in the truth. You have to prove yourself that I am a child of God. Once people see that, they will believe that your God is really a God who can change your life. Especially if they knew your past, hallelujah, of who you are. They will kind of embrace that your God really changed people. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's move on to life of defiance, meaning open resistance or bold disobedience. Men love darkness and they practice a life of defiance against God or the Word of God. Why? Because we have this inherited sin in us. And even believers, from time to time, your old you is kind of resurrecting and proving himself that he's alive in you and it's a matter of disciplining that right and uh, and uh, being obedient to the Lord that you can conquer that resurrected old you and make him obey to the truth amen hallelujah we love darkness and I told I told uh, Kuya Gems um, during the, the, the cycling, um, cycling time last Sunday, I told him that um, sometimes people love to disobey the law and they find it fun of doing it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Tito Gems says, yeah, I agree. No, sometimes in, in, uh, in violation, they find it uh, really exciting of uh, doing so. No, because of the evil part of us. That is why a sinful nature that is in us. So we must uh, imprison that. Amen. And we must submit that. Let it submit to the very truth of the Lord. Very word of the Lord. In Matthew 24, 12, it says, Jesus said that before his return, sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold. Can you feel that? Especially in this time of pandemic. Especially in this time of pandemic. If we are not having a face-to-face -face, um, worship and still you are not participating online I will guarantee you that it will be normal to you to have the full week without worshiping the Lord it will be normal to you of not having fellowship online it will be normal to you to live a life without engagement in any of the church activity and how do you call a person that don't have this kind of lifestyle he is what you will find yourself a backslider hallelujah so be careful with that this system that we are in right now, we must as well, hallelujah, diligently open that cell phone, proceed on the online service, watch and listen to the very word of God if you want to keep on going and growing spiritually. You need that or else, Hallelujah, the world will divert you to a kind of believer that they want you to be. A believer that doesn't have any activity, commitment, and engagement with the Lord. Hallelujah, be mindful of that. And people of Noah's days, hallelujah, 
Luke 17, 26 to 30. They, uh, they suffered the judgment of the flood because of their violence and evil. Jesus said that it would be like the days of Noah and, the lo and Lot when Jesus will return. And we can see that happening. Wars. Rumors of wars. Um, killing. Hallelujah. Um, all those robbery. All those well, murders that is happening. Family killing each other. So on and so forth. Hallelujah. It may not be the end, but the end is coming. That's what Jesus said. The end is coming, and the day draw near, the coming of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, Romans 1, 24 to 32. Um, the result of lives live in defiance. God turns them over their reprobate minds and their deprived hearts. Let's open that. Romans 1, 24-32 So God abandoned them to whatever shameful things their hearts desire. As a result, they did vile and degrading things which each other's body. They traded the truth about God for a lie, so they worship and serve the things God, God created instead of the Creator Himself, who is worthy of etern eternal praise. Amen. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulge in sex with each other and the man instead of having normal sexual relation with women burned with lust for each other men did shameful things with other men and as a result of this sin they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserve since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that they should never be done their lives became full of every kind of wickedness sin greed hate, envy, murder, quarrel, and deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are box stubber, haters of God, insolent, proud, boastful. They invent new ways of sinning and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, break their promises, and heartless, and have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die. Yet, yeah, they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them to. Amen. You see, Paul is very vocal as well in telling us the truth. It's lawlessness. There's no law at all, spiritual law. It's, it's really evil in the mind and in the heart of many people. And it keeps on growing every day. The number is keeping on increasing. The death in Ukraine is increasing. Hallelujah. It's because of sin. And people are not thinking to come back to the Lord. Hallelujah. They are kind of enjoying such thing. Not unless we intervene. Not unless we introduce Christ to them. And here we can see that God is really releasing that. He's allowing it because all things that we are doing here on earth is depend upon us this is our own decision and not god's decision uh, in our bible study there was a question posted that why if god is a loving god gracious god merciful god why there's why why there's hell hallelujah god created hell to prove the love of of man to him it's not designed for God to throw people in the hell, but it's there to prove your love to God. And if you disobey God, you yourself is putting your, your soul in the hell and not God. Hallelujah. Do we understand that? The, 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 the fruit of good and evil inside the garden is for them to prove their love to God. And they messed up. It proves that they did not love God in that instance, although they returned to the Lord. Amen. It's not that because God will judge people. No. God created heaven and earth and uh, the, the first man and woman inside the paradise for them to be called, become righteous uh, with 
with God and to have fellowship with God forevermore in the absence of sin. Hallelujah. But we must prove our love to God. Amen. And the evil deeds that man is doing is increasing every day. We can see that around us. Open your eyes. And if you are really a child of God, you will have this burden inside of you to share the good news to the people. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, there are no exceptions. Acts 1.8 that it says Jesus commanded his disciples and all of us to be witnesses. Jesus said, and you will be my witnesses. Matthew 28, 19, Jesus said, Therefore go and make what? Disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There is a command of God for all of us, for all his children, for us to recruit people into the army of God. Amen. Recruit people to become a family of God. And we must have that inside our heart because we are in a crucial time right now. Now, effective witness, letter B. Our witness is crucial as a salt. Salt is crucial for preserving and seasoning. Salt as preservative is... Uh, the main use of any dish the body needs some salt sodium deficiency can cause fatigue seizures muscle spasm confusion and coma even wow lack of salt salt gives strength salt causes a person to be thirst and salt stings when it touches an open wound jesus said christians are the salt of the earth we are to be as a preservative in this decaying world, decaying society, decaying community, and even decaying family. We should be the salt, hallelujah, inside the family, community, country, hallelujah, circle of friends. Amen. We should be the salt. In 2 Timothy 3.13, what Paul said, that in the last days, um, evil people and imposter will flourish they will deceive others and we we will themselves be deceived amen hallelujah and it's going on and it's going on around us this is not this is not unusual but this is usual we can see this happening and we need to move mobilize ourselves we need to to go and volunteer as an army of the Lord, as, as a soldier of the Lord, to go forth and be the salt and be the light of this earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Like salt, Christians are to have godly influence. Godly influence, not evil influence. We are to penetrate the forces of decay in our culture. We must speak the truth in love and even when it stings like salt to an open wound. They need that because hurt is better than, than uh, compromising. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. To me, oh, when I share that in the U.S., they, they kind of hurt when I share that. But it's, it's, it's for their good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Better to hear that from me. Amen. Hallelujah. And salt adds flavor to the food. Christians should flavor the world with God's grace and truth. We should bring out the best in the peoples around us. If salt has lost its saltiness, it is good for nothing. Hallelujah. The salt in the Bible in the days when we read also the passage um, in those days could become contaminated. And it was placed on the path where people walked. The salt was good to kill the grass and cover the mud should it rain. Hallelujah. This is the, the, the value of, of that contaminated salt. No, they just throw it and the people will trample on it, walk on it. It will lost its value in the same manner with us. What, what profits us if we gain everything but loses one soul? Nothing. Hallelujah. What profits us if we already explore the whole world 
and loses your soul. What profits us if we gain everything and have, uh, have many, many money and very wealthy, hallelujah, but loses our family? What profits us? Nothing. Amen? So be mindful as a believer of the Lord. God is expecting us to be a salt of this earth. Jesus was teaching that it was impossible for Christians to lose their saltiness. It was impossible. Their lives become entangled in the world and their testimony is compromised. Hallelujah. When Christians become like the world, we become useless for the Lord's work. Yeah, at first, it, it's impossible for us to lose our saltiness. But if we engage ourselves and entangle in ourselves with the things of the world, hallelujah, compromise here and there, our testimony will be compromised. And we will be like the world. We will live with no difference. Hallelujah. Believer and unbeliever act the same. Do the same things. Think the same. Hallelujah. There's no difference at all. Amen. So we must be the salt of the earth. And the Bible tells us in, in 1 John 2.15, the Bible tells us not to love the world. 1 John 2.15 Do not love this world nor the things it offers you for when you love the world you do not have the love of the Father in you. Just simple po um, as simple as this that please don't compromise because if we compromise the word of God said the love of the Father will not be in us. And we are talking a loving Father here. And we have the word to back up in 1 John. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't challenge the love of God. Because God is justice. Amen. God is justice. And that is the beauty about the Lord. He is righteous and He is just. God doesn't compromise. God doesn't condone sin. God does, will not tap you at the back and say, Hey boy, you are okay if you are not okay. There is no such thing. Hallelujah. We must exercise our faith in believing the Lord because His grace is abundant. Amen. But His grace is abundant that you are not exercising your faith and you are not doing anything but you are being swallowed by the sin of the world and you are living like anyone else in this world. Hallelujah! Do you expect that you will go to heaven? That is a lie. Amen? You will not and you will never be. Only when you come to repentance and receive God as your Lord and personal Savior and walked in the righteousness of God, I will guarantee you 100%. Hallelujah. You will be with God forevermore. Amen. When the world doesn't know us, it means we are not of this world. We are children of God and citizens of heaven. That's a good thing. The world will hate us like they did to Jesus. Simple as that. Hallelujah. And our witness is critical as the light. Hallelujah. If you have ever walked in dark where you are not familiar with, with the place, you know how critical it is to have light with you. Amen. In the same way, when we are do cycling and it's dark, we need to have that torchlight with us to shine our way or else it will be critical. We don't know what lies ahead. Hallelujah. Amen. So in the dark, you are at risk of getting, getting serious injury. Or worst, you might be killed along the way if you don't have light with you. Light illuminates your path as you can see where you are going. As Christian, we are to be light to those darkness. A spirit-filled Christian will give light to those in darkness like a city that is set on a hill and cannot be hidden. Wow! Everybody that is looking unto you will see, definitely see your light if we are living in light. Amen? If we are really have that, that 
relationship. Hallelujah. Cemented relationship with the Lord. Amen. For sure, people will see your light. You don't burn your lamps at home with a basket covering them. You place them on a table or lamp so that light will fill the room. Christians are to let the light shine so people will see Christ in us. You do not hide nor deny that the Lord Jesus, but confess Him before men. Lost people are in darkness, and we must bring them to the light in Jesus. Amen. And that is really our promise to God. And the third item, compelling or inspiring hiring conviction work we are not saved by our works but we are created or we were created in Jesus Christ and to good works doing good works are not bad amen hallelujah and and people will say don't do it why because that is the finished work of the Lord I don't get it, sorry. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The saved man is not saved by his work. Definitely. But the saved man will work for the glory of God. We should be compelled to do work of God, enriching the lost and out of love for the Lord. Amen. We are doing this because we love God. And we love the people. We want them to to be in paradise forevermore. Amen. Say amen. Hallelujah. Now, a motive for good works. Your motive should always be that you may be or you will do good work as a witness for Christ. You must remember the lost are watching you. Everyone else are watching you. And they need the Lord. Look on soul winning as a business and not an accidental matter. As a work and not a play as time will spent and not wasted time as a privilege and not a boresome duty look at the bright side when we are doing good works for the glory of God when we are doing good works in the vineyard of God do it as an opportunity given by the Lord hallelujah valuable time that you spent with people to come close to God, hallelujah, and receive God as their Lord and personal Savior. The greatest motive you should have is to bring glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. John 15, 8, that says, When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciple. This brings great glory to my Father. Produce much fruit, and not only fruit, but good fruit. This will glorify the Father. And again, this is expected by God for us to bear fruit. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, and you aim, your aim should not be to receive the applause nor the approval of men. Whatever you do, you should do it for the glory of God. Exactly. Whatever we do, whether we eat, whether we we do our services before the Lord, sharing the gospel to people, helping in charity. We will do it for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And I hope and I pray that I bring good news to you. And I hope all of us here right now and for those who will be watching later, we can be the light and the salt of this earth. Amen. And God is expecting us to do so. And I know you can do it. And I know you have that burden as well inside your heart to share the good news to your family, to your relatives, to your friends, community, country, and other parts of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining me. And let me bring you my conclusion. It is a blessing to see God's people being the salt and light in this world. You are making a difference. God takes a notice of your good works as He is keeping a record. In Revelation 20.12, it says, And I saw the, de the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by things which were written in the book. 
So it's true that God is recording and take notice of our good works. Ephesians 5.8 In the past you were full of darkness, but now you are full of light in the Lord. So live like children who belong to the light. If you are saved, come to Jesus by faith. He will bring you out of darkness of sin and into His glorious light. Therefore, I will encourage you today, shine in darkness. Amen. Once again, shine in darkness. I hope and I pray that we are all encouraged today with that simple message and just to stir up, hallelujah, what is inside of us, being the salt and being the light of this world and before we we close this meeting i would like to pray those who gonna stray and those who haven't received jesus as their lord and personal savior to pray hallelujah to pray with me and repeat after me at the prayer of salvation and i would like to introduce jesus into your life and if you will uh, we will pray together in the name of jesus shall we pray heavenly father i thank you lord for the message today i thank you for calling me lord god and uh, wanted me to be in your paradise thank you for your love thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy lord i confess that i am a sinner apart from you i can do nothing thank you dear god for receiving me as your child i receive jesus into my life i receive jesus as my lord and personal savior lord drive my life pilot my life navigate my life dear god now and forevermore and lord don't forget to write my name in the book of life in jesus mighty name i pray amen and amen and for those who are sick let me pray for you have faith in your heart god is a healer and never changes the same yesterday today and forever and let me pray for you heavenly father i thank you lord for releasing lord your blessing through healing in the name of jesus those who are suffering lord god from covid 19 cancer sickness and disease i rebuke dear god the spirit of sickness covid lord god and cancer to come out from their body because because they are powerless in the name of Jesus. They have no business in the body of all these patients. They are temple of the Holy Spirit and the, the spirit of sickness and disease, COVID-19 and cancer has no business to stay in there. So we command them to come out, hallelujah because you are powerless in the name of jesus i release dear god the spirit of healing in all these patients physical body dear god hallelujah in jesus name and i want you to receive that healing that is very powerful very simple you just say yes jesus i receive the healing and it will manifest in your life have faith jesus is the same today and forever he is a powerful god he is a loving god a merciful god he wants you to be healed so claim that healing today in jesus mighty name i pray amen and amen thank you so much for being with me let's give back all the glory to our god all glory all honor all praise all thanksgiving all worship belongs to christ alone happy sunday everybody and please stay safe